The last example I'm going to do of finding the limit using that limit definition, you, finding the derivative using the limit definition, is the absolute value function. Now, the absolute value function can be thought of a piecewise defined function. The function is negative x when x is negative, and the function is positive x when x is zero or positive. So the absolute value function we can find a derivative of. Now, how do we do that? Well, we're going to find it in pieces. We're going to find the derivative when x is less than zero. And we're going to find the derivative when x is greater than zero. And then for x equals zero, where this thing is cut off at, we need to see if the limits match up or not. We have our absolute value function here. And to find the derivative, we have to find the derivative piecewise as well. So we're going to find the derivative um, when x is below 0, when x is negative. So let's do that one first. x is below 0, x is negative. Well, when x is negative, as long as h's are really, really small values, then x plus h also is going to be negative. Think about that again. If x is negative, so let's say x is negative 1, as long as h is really, really small, we can fit it into this definition for this expression. So when we plug in x plus h, we can also plug it into the negative value expression. If you plug that into the negative value expression, you just get negative of x plus h. Well, if x is negative and I plug it into my absolute value expression, I just get negative x. So the derivative definition is limit of negative a x plus h minus negative x divided by h. That limit, when I distribute the negative sign, is negative x minus h plus x in the numerator. And that limit happens to be the fraction negative h divided by h. You can either simplify that or just realize that that limit is going to be equal to negative 1. So when x is less than 0, the derivative is a constant of negative 1. Now, what about the limit when x is above 0, or the derivative when x is above 0? So let me copy this and put that right here. So when x is above 0, we're going to plug in both numbers, both x plus h and x, into the positive values expression. I can do that so long as I let my h be a really, really, really small number. So no matter what x is, you can find an h that's a really, really, really small number that you can plug in there, as long as x is above 0. Now, if x is right at 0, then we get problems. So notice that I am forcing us to have an x value, which is explicitly above 0. I'm not letting it be equal to 0. So that limit becomes, well, if I plug in x plus h into my function, since it's above 0, I just need to plug it into the x. So plug in x plus h into x, you get x plus h. Minus, plug in the function 
If x is above 0, you just get back x. Notice what's going to happen here is we're going to get a single fraction, h over h, which you can simplify and say that is equal to 1. So my derivative when x is above 0 is a positive 1. Now, think about this. What's going to happen when x is 0? Well, when x is 0, if the h values are positive, we're going to get a right-hand limit of positive 1. And if the h values are negative, we're going to get a left-hand limit of negative 1. So the derivative can't exist at 0. Let me say that again. If we take the limit as h goes to 0 from the right, that means, oh, excuse me, at 0, sorry, when x is 0, what's going to happen is we're going to have a limit of, well, if h is positive, then I'm going to get just h minus 0 on top, which we can figure out is 1. If I take the limit as h goes to 0 from the left, when you plug in this, since h is negative, what happens is you end up with a negative h minus 0, which becomes negative 1. So the left and right hand limits do not exist. And therefore, the derivative of a the absolute value function at 0 does not exist. So think about what that means for my derivative function. For my derivative function, that means we really have three scenarios for the absolute value. You get absolute value, uh, excuse me, we get negative 1 and 1 when x is lower than 0 and x is above 0. And we get a does not exist for an x value which is equal to 0. So because this is piecewise defined, at that cutoff point, we get a does not exist. I want to think about what this means graphically as well. So here's our absolute value function right there. And notice that as you're traveling along the line, or as you're traveling along the absolute value function, if you're in the negative x territory, then your rate of change is a constant. In fact, if you think about this, the tangent line always has to be y equals minus 1x because the rate of change is always moving down at a slope of negative 1. Well, if you're on the positive half of the absolute value function, then the reverse is true. You're always moving up at a rate, but in this case, of positive 1. So the absolute value function on the right-hand side has a rate of change or a slope of 1 no matter where you're at. On the left-hand side, it has a rate of change or a slope of negative 1 no matter where you're at. 
But at this sharp corner here, where we're at zero, because one derivative is coming in from the right at, a, at having a slope of one, and from the left having a slope of negative one, they don't match up at that sharp corner. So that tells me that even though this function is continuous, it does not like, uh, derivatives do not like sharp corners. Derivatives are not going to be defined at sharp corners. And also derivatives aren't gonna be defined when we have piecewise smooth functions and piecewise defined functions and they don't meet, meet up. So for instance, if we have something like this, a piecewise defined function where we have a jump discontinuity where it jumps from here to here, then the derivatives aren't gonna match up either because the derivative lines uh, don't work there. So derivative from uh, the limit from the right-hand side and the limit from the left-hand side aren't going to match up. Think about the analogy of driving a car and looking at the headlights. Your headlights as you drive from left to right are gonna be pointed out this way, whereas your headlights as you're going from right to left are gonna be pointed out that way. So the tangent lines can't possibly meet up. So all in all, here's what's going on. When we have piecewise defined functions, the derivatives of those functions can also be found piecewise, but we do have to be wary that perhaps where the jump is in my x value, the derivative will not match up. So all from the left hand and the right hand limit. So piecewise defined functions, we can find derivatives piecewise, except we have to be wary that where my function is piecewise defined, where I have a jump, my derivative may not exist. So that's how you use the limit definition to find derivatives.